Hi, I want to help you with your data. So I put some data in here. Um, let me move myself up here. So you could have several different conditions, several different trials, whatever it is. For the sake of this uh, video, I'm going to paste some names in here. I'm going to say this is light conditions, and I'm going to say this is growth in plants in centimeters. Okay, so, but you could make it be anything, whatever your data is. All right, so then let's say you want to figure out what your, um, what your averages are, right? So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna put average. So if you remember from our other videos we watched, if you can kind of remember what you're supposed to do, were you thinking equals? Yay, so equals, and then I'm gonna put, and you'll see it, it already knew what I wanted to do. It's saying, you wanna average C3, yes, I do. So if it didn't say that, now I can hit return, okay? If it didn't come up with that right away, you would just do equal and you would start hitting average, and then it would probably come up like right down here, average, and it would do the same thing, okay? So then I could do this. That would work every single time, or better yet, if I grab this and notice, notice it goes from a pointer to that square. If you just drag down, then I will have it for all of them. So now I have the averages. And remember the other name for average is mean. Okay, so remember we, we already learned about that. Okay, then the next thing we learned about was standard deviation. So I'm just gonna write, standard deviation right here. So we can do it the long way for standard deviation, or once again, we can hit equals, and then I can start typing standard, oh, look, there it came up, standard deviation. And I want it to be, remember, just these trials, so don't go grab your average, right? Close parentheses. So now I have the standard deviation, and that, remember, measures the spread of my data. That measures the spread of my data. So now I grab it, make it a box. Now I have the standard deviation for all of them. Now, I don't like looking at all of that like that. <laughs> it's too many numbers. So I'm going to go up here and decrease the decimal places. Okay, I don't need to see all of those numbers. That's good. All right, so let's take a look and see if that even makes sense. Look at my standard deviation is largest for this one, 3.7. Notice the data ranges from 11, 14, 11, 9, all the way down to 6. Watch what happens to my mean and my standard deviation. If this, oh, I'm like, I put it in wrong for that one. This one is 16, and then I hit return. Notice my mean changed and so did my um, standard deviation. It got smaller because there wasn't such a big difference. On this one, let's say instead of 19 right here, this was supposed to be um, 23. I'm gonna put it in there. So you can see how it changed, all right? So here's mean, here's standard deviation. Next thing you wanna calculate is standard error. So standard error. Now, I haven't found an easier way than what I'm gonna show you right now. You remember the standard deviation divided by um, the square root of your sample size is how you get it. So we're just gonna put that in there. I'm gonna say equal. So I'm gonna go get my standard deviation, which is this box, right? I5. And then I'm gonna say divided by, and then I want the square root, square, oh, there it came up, square root. And I'm gonna count how many in my sample size? Five. So I'm gonna put five, close parentheses, hit the return, there's my standard error. That would be plus or minus one when I plotted my mean. So I'm gonna have it do the standard error for all of them. Boom, boom, boom. Now I have the standard error. You know I don't looking at, like looking at all those numbers, so I'm gonna make the standard error a little bit smaller. And remember, we want the smallest standard error of all. That um, leads to the validity of our data. Okay, so now I have all the numbers I need, and now it's time to plot my graph. So I'm just going to move myself up here somewhere, okay, so I can plot my graph. So what am I going to plot? Well, I'm going to plot my different conditions. So 
I have dark, full shade. I'm highlighting that. And then I'm also, and you just hit command, I'm going to graph the mean. Okay, so here's the different conditions. I'm not going to plot all my trials. I'm just going to plot the mean. That's what I need. Now, for some strange reason, sometimes it's kind of annoying, but Google Sheets wants to be helpful and it's not. It might be a good idea for you to get rid of this number right here to begin with. Okay, because it's going to start to want to do things for you that you don't want. So let me re-highlight that again. I got rid of that number. You, ah, okay, here I go. Now command, and then I'm going to hit this. All right, now I'm ready to insert my graph. So I'm going to insert, I'm going to insert my chart. Okay, it's going to come up any minute now. There it is. And it always gets right in the middle of my business when I want to do that. So all you have to do is just select it and move it and move it okay so i'm going to move it right down here okay and i make it just a little bit smaller now the first thing i want you to see is that everything is colored exactly the same okay i can see it plotted my means right so it looks like partial sun was awesome it has growth in plants in centimeters over here okay and it has my light conditions down here that's awesome Okay, but the problem is I won't be able to put in my standard error bars. So, because it's going to make all the error bars the same, and I'll show you what I mean by that. If I click this right here, okay, and I hit edit chart, you might think, okay, so setup, I have all of that. That looks, okay, I like the way it looks. And if I go to customize and you go down to series, this is considered a series, a series of blue. If you scroll down here and you see error bars, you're like, oh, error bars, that's just what I needed. Boy, that got big fast. Okay, so now, sorry. So now, just a minute here, having trouble. Okay, so let me, okay, sorry, I got a little big on there. So you might think if you hit here again, let me try that again, so sorry, and I go to edit chart one more time, okay? If you go into customize, if you go down to series, you're gonna see as you scroll down there, you're gonna see error bars. You're like, oh, that's what I need, boom, error bars. Hey, and look, there are error bars on that. Those are not error bars that are accurate to what we have calculated. So that's not gonna work. And the reason is it's just treating them all the same. So you don't wanna do that. We've gotta get these to be treated as individual events so we can give individual errors to each of those. So I'm gonna go back here into my setup. This is the way it's gonna work. I scroll down here. Do you see how it says use row three as headers, use column B, do you see where it says switch rows and columns? So I'm gonna hit switch. And that gives me no data, that's not helpful. So use column B as a header, no, I don't like how that looks. Switch this off, no, I don't like how that looks. And so you kind of play around with these a little bit and all of a sudden it turns out right. It is so annoying. Click, unclick, and all of a sudden you have the right things. Now, you may not like this to be up here. We can move that down to the bottom, but you click and unclick and then it works. Okay, so now do you see how the key thing here is that I have all different colors for my bars. Now I can treat them individually with air. So if I wanna go now into customize and now, if you look where it says apply to all in series, now I can treat them individually. Well, I kind of covered up my um, error, so I'm gonna go copy it right here so I can see it. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna copy. Now, what's important if you're moving it so you can look at it is when you go to paste, paste special, and you wanna paste values only. Otherwise, what it's going to start doing is it's going to start to recalculate your standard error. So paste special. Okay, do you see how the numbers are exactly the same? Now I can look at it. Okay, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to edit chart and I'm going to go to customize and I'm going to go to series and now I'm going to apply just to dark. And you know what? Maybe when I make this, I want dark to actually be dark. So I'm going to make it black 
And I'm going to go down here for the error bar. And the error bar for the first one, it's not a percent. It's a constant. And it's just giving me a ginormous run right now of 10. But that's not my error bar for that. My error bar is 0 0.68. So I'm just going to put 0.68. Okay. So now it has its error bar. Sweet. Now I want to do the next one, full sun. Okay. And then this one here is shade. I think I'm going to do that one next because I'm going to make that one a shady color so I don't get confused with the two colors. Um, so I'm going to go back up here to my series. Okay. And I'm going to pick the one that says shade and I'm going to make that look shady. I don't know what looks shady. Maybe that looks shady. Okay, and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to put error bars. And for the third one in, the error bar was 0.66. So I need to say constant and its bar is 0.66. Perfect. Okay, I'm done with that one. Now I'm going to go do full sun and I'm going to make, there's full sun. I'm going to change it to really bright yellow, whatever that might be. B. Will that be good? No, that's obnoxious. Or maybe I'll pick that. Okay, so that one is full sun. And I'm going to give its error bars again, constant and full sun. The second one down was 1.50. Okay, I'm done. And then I would keep going here into partial, partial sun. Sounds kind of like shade to me. I just made these up. So I'm going to pick this one. Error bar, again, same thing, constant. And the partial sun one was 1.16. 1 1.16. 1 done. And my last one is my growing light. That's fine color. I'm going to pick the error bar, again, constant. And the growing light was 1.30. Whoa. Not 130, 1.3. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So now I've got this looking the way I want. Now, maybe yours didn't label itself exactly right. So I wanted to show you how you could do that if you wanted to when you go to edit chart. Okay. So it's a column chart. That's good. I'm going to go to customize. So chart style, we already picked our chart style. So I'm not worried about that. Um, chart axes and titles. Here's my chart title. Now, if I wanted to, I could even have a chart subtitle and I could say, um, back, uh, let's see, investigative. I'm not saying for you to do this, but I'm just showing you if you have a subtitle. Now it's got investigative lab 2020. Um, Again, if, they're, if your axes weren't labeled correctly, you can change your horizontal or your vertical axes right there and so that you have all of it. Um, your legend, maybe you don't want it on the top. See where it says position? So I'm gonna say I want my legend on the bottom for my different conditions. All right, so now I've made my chart. I've got it titled. I like the way it looks. Um, so now if I wanted to, I could um, publish this chart, copy this chart. Um, I could download it as a PDF or a PNG and then I could put it as in I could um, load it directly into my Google slide deck. So I hope that's helpful for you. Notice I led with my independent variables then I put my dependent variables. Notice how I went around and I needed to change them when they were all blue, which is what they'll default to, then you can't change the error bars. But if you make them individual, you can, all right? Any questions, don't forget, see me in seventh period. You're important. I love you. I think that's it.